Hello guys, how's it going? Welcome to Lure Painting Live. I am Krista, the painter behind Colorado Custom Lures. And tonight is a Saturday night edition of Lure Painting Live. Let me adjust this just a smidge. And uh, welcome everybody. I don't know if you guys can see me yet. Okay, so I'm going to check my view here on Facebook. Um, so we're going to be doing some salmon lures tonight. Um, a friend gave these to me who fishes salmon and wanted me to repaint these for me with, for him, sorry, with some of the colors that he prefers. And um, I'll tell you a little bit about them and what they are and how they work in just a moment. I'll let everybody get on first. So welcome everyone. If you're watching on Facebook, welcome. Um, I'm still popping up the page here, so I haven't seen anybody's comments just yet. Uh, it's reloading for me here. And I will pin the uh, website. I am going to do 15% off in stock items. This does not apply to custom orders. So if you ordered something, you know, paint to order, that wouldn't be included in the, in the discount. I just run the discounts to help move some of my in-stock inventory. So the code will be LIVE in all caps. And you can use that through tomorrow night if you want to order anything in stock. I do have a few new things in there. If you haven't checked in a while, go check again. And I will post the website here for you too. Looks like everybody can see me. My itchy nose. I always have an itchy nose when I come on here because just the way it goes, man. All right, so here is the website, and also the Insta bio, which will uh, give you a quick link to all of my social media accounts if you want to follow me on my other accounts. I'm not real active on Twitter. I post like updates when I have new stuff, and um, so I post most of my new stuff on Instagram, and then it gets copied over to. Facebook and then of course all my live videos are on YouTube and some content that has not been updated in a long time so anyway uh, without further ado I will show you what we got but thanks everybody for joining how are we all doing good Steven I'm glad you guys were able to catch something we did not really we went this afternoon well this morning and this afternoon it was pretty slow yes Ronnie I do have a uh, trout lures mostly just hard baits like small minnows and uh the guys that fish those in colorado um streams have really good luck with them so um they've caught lots of good fish with them so they do work i don't have a lot of spoons but i do have them i have some to paint i just don't have a lot of time so i need to make an effort to do some of those sometime um it's just hard to get everything in so I will try. I have a bunch of spoons. I just haven't really done anything with them yet. I have a lot of small ones for ice fishing and then, yeah. But I don't have like a lot of tiny like trout lures for stream fishing, no. My son is trying to photo bomb me right now. He's looking at me and laughing at me. He has a toy chainsaw that he got today that he of course thinks is super funny. He thought it was he thought it was real at the store. He thought he was gonna get a chainsaw that actually cut wood. He was pretty disappointed when he got home and found out that it was a rubber saw blade. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna show you guys what we're doing tonight. Uh, this is um, called a Brad Super Baked Cut Plug, and if you've never heard of these before, they um, have a little flap here with some holes in it and the holes are um, to expose the scent of this little, you can put this little foam piece that comes with it um, inside of the, I'll show you the package, you can see the foam thing. Or you can put like, you know, fish, like a fish, piece of fish in it or whatever. Anyway, you can soak this stuff in scent, this foam thing. Um, and then, Oh, there's a little rubber band that goes around the end of this to keep it closed so that you know it doesn't fall out or whatever 
So these are pretty interesting. I guess they're really good for salmon fishing. If you're into salmon fishing, and that's what I'm painting them for. So this, the patterns are going to be pretty simple tonight, but I'll show you some techniques for masking and stuff like that. That might be helpful for you. So, all right. Hello, guys. Thanks for checking in. Um, hello, hello, everybody. You're sore? I'm sore, too, because there's blood funny on my neck. So it hurts to turn my head and all that stuff. But that's nothing new for me. I have a, um, I got whiplash when I was in my early, like, mid-20s riding motocross. So my neck is, like, really sensitive to tweaks and whatnot. So I get, um, yeah, I get stiff necks all the time. So I'm just, this is actually, I should say, this that I'm taping off here is UV Glow. And it comes with this on the bottom. So I don't want to paint over that. So I'm just going to take some tape and I'm going to cover it up. It's nice here, Rob. We had like, um, I don't know, like 72 degrees here today. And it wasn't even re really very, very windy, which is kind of unusual. Where I live, it's always windy. Uh, the guys have a tournament tomorrow. Uh, I shouldn't say just the guys. I mean, there's some women fishing too, not me. Um, I'm on kid duty, um, but there's a big, Chris is running a big tournament tomorrow for the American Bass Association. I think they have like 31 or 32 boats. So, um, and they should have some nice weather. It's supposed to be about 80. So it should be a good day. So I don't know what it's like for you, but you're in Canada. So I kind of doubt that it's very fantastic, but maybe better than usual. <laughs> All right. You got your second COVID shot yet? Yesterday, good for you. Are you? How are you feeling? I get mine on um, April twelfth. Uh, I don't remember. April something. I got one. I'm. I get the other one. It's in my phone. I have it saved in my phone. But I didn't get sick at all, except for just a little dizzy, like after mine for maybe a couple hours. I felt a little dizzy, like an hour after I got it, and that was about it. And so hopefully the next one will be just as uneventful. So I didn't really have any way to hang these up. While I was painting them, there's a little hole in here where the leader runs through. Um, and so I was just sticking like a paper clip in there to hang them up, like while they're drying or whatever. And then, um, so I masked off that. So let's just do the belly first. Now he wanted some fluorescent colors. So I'm going to go, I'm going to cover this beautiful chrome and that might make some of you sad, which I understand. Um, but that's what he wanted on some of them, so that's what I'm going to do. And um, I won't do it on all of them, but it snowed there yesterday. Yeah, it snowed here like not very long ago, a few days. I think Thursday maybe it snowed, Thursday night or something like that. No, maybe it was Tuesday. I think it was Tuesday, actually. Nobody cares. Anyways, I'm going to, I'm just looking at my photos to remember what colors, uh, he suggested. I don't think that he's super picky. He just kind of wants them to be fluorescent and stuff. So, um, so I'm going to, um, just go ahead and put Dino Res primer on this and, um, this will help the paint adhere to the lure. It's got, um, it's an acrylic polyurethane and it's got good adhesion properties. So it'll help the paint stick better than just an acrylic, uh, white acrylic base. So I saved all these photos he sent me. I have so many pictures. Oh my gosh. So this was a chartreuse he wanted on this side. And then he had some, some like pink and orange on the other side. And then some of them with like chartreuse lines down the middle, which this kind of already has. So I'll just go over it and make it brighter. So we're gonna do that. So pink, orange tail, chartreuse here, chartreuse here. And then we'll do another one like blue and pink or something like that. And uh, I might just do my own thing on one of them and just kind of make like a cool fluorescent shed pattern or something like that. But I'm gonna leave a little bit of the, uh, a little bit of this, this holographic foil exposed so that we don't cover all that flash up. So right now I'm just uh, making sure I have all these areas covered with the primer. Okay, and then I shouldn't have put so much in there because I'm, I'm not really thinking. So I just wasted a lot of paint. 
and dumped in my I dumped in the wrong cup too. So that was also equally as brilliant. Wouldn't be the first time, won't be the last. <laughs> All right. So I'm just cleaning this out and I'll just wipe. I usually just um, stir and rinse with water a couple times. It just depends how much paint you have in there and how much, like what cup color it is and how good you have to do cleaning it out. And I didn't have that much in there, so it was no big deal. Uh, you know what? I forgot to grab white. So give me one second here. Totally forgot white. And here it is. Sorry about that. We will need white, and I don't know if I even have enough in here. So I might have to grab the big bottle, but we'll see. So this just got clogged. Sometimes I get a lot of buildup. That's not working. You find whatever you can around you that's pokey, and you just use that to get the gunk out. So then I'm gonna put a coat of bright white. This is um, actually pre-mixed um, Wicked Detail Flat Opaque White. And I already reduced it in that bottle so that I could just use it on the fly because I use white so much that it makes sense to just kind of reduce a little bottle of it and then just have it ready to go. Uh, I don't do that with a lot of colors, but I do it with white and black usually. Hello, Richard. You had a bad headache? Oh, I bet it is. Nice. Hello, Bill. Hey, guys. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Make sure you share the feed if you can. I am doing a 15% discount for the rest of the weekend if you want to order anything that you saw that you liked, that you were maybe thinking about getting. Now you can get a little bit of a discount on it if you order this weekend. I'll have that discount active until Sunday at midnight. All right. So now we're going to do some chartreuse. So when I make chartreuse, um, I always just do a yellow fluorescent yellow. Some people like using lime green, which is like a pearl, light greenish yellow color. Like, for example, here, this jerk bait is lime green. I'll show you what lime green looks like. It has a little bit of, this is lime green. So, uh, this is Createx lime green, pearl lime green. Uh, those are just for custom order. Um, some people will use that and then put fluorescent yellow over it and say that that works really well as a chartreuse, and I believe it. Um, but I haven't ever done it that way, and I probably should try it sometime, but... Usually I just do a uh, yellow and then I dip my um, paintbrush in green just to get a little bit on my brush. You know, like not a whole drop, but just a little bit, a little bit on my brush. And then I stir it into the yellow carefully to make sure I don't overdo the green. If you just want it to have just the ever so slight green tint to it, right? You don't want to like, you can overdo it fast. So that's that's how I make chartreuse because you can't really buy water-based chartreuse paint. I mean, it might exist, but I've never found it. Um, but it's no big deal. So we'll make uh, we'll paint over this white, and you'll have to do several coats if you want to get it bright. So I'll just do a light coat, and you have to be careful not to overdo it, or it'll start to run and pool, and then it looks messy. So you have to have patience when you're spraying fluorescent colors, because they do take a lot of coats to get a good, um, bright color. Usually about five or six coats, I would say, is what you need. Because if you put them on too heavy, they just start to run and spider everywhere. And it's best not to be in a hurry and just give it a quick shot on the, with the hair dryer in between. Or if, you, if you're if you doing multiple lures at a time, 
like do one coat, hang that one up, grab the next one, do one coat, hang that up, grab the next one. And then usually by the time you get back to the beginning, the first one is dry again and you can just recoat. So, but since we're doing, I'm just doing start to finish here. I'll just use the hair dryer. Hello guys, uh, please share the feed if you can. I appreciate the shares. And um, don't forget to check out what's new on the website as well when you get time. Looks like I've got a few people on YouTube. Thanks everybody for watching on YouTube. In the description, I did post a link to all my social media um, accounts. And also uh, the discount code for tonight through Sunday, if you're watching live, this is the 24th of April, will be live L-I-V-E and you'll get 15% off your order. And that is only good for in-stock orders on the website. If you missed it, tune back in again next week and I'll probably do the same thing. But there's no guarantee that you're going to get what you want because it could be out by then. So it's all just a gamble. You never know. I never know what people are going to buy. Sometimes I paint things and I think that it's going to go fast and doesn't. And then vice versa. So the guessing game, what you guys are doing sometimes. I do my best. Or I try anyway. I cannot scroll. There we go. Hey, Dan. Sorry, I'm just um, going to quick drink. Okay. Since I have my chartreuse and my gun, I'm going to do this midline. And then, um, ooh, you know what? Actually, see, now this is going to be the hard part because, yeah, I think I'm just going to do it this way. With this particular lure, he wanted, um, it's hard to do this all in one sitting because I'm going to have to mask some stuff off that might not, it might peel off when I take the tape off, but that's just a chance I'm going to have to take. So we'll peel this off. So now you can see we've got, there's a tiny bit of um, chrome sticking out. That was kind of my fault, but you can see now that it's chart, chartreuse on one side and so I recommend frog tape for this stuff, you guys, if you're going to do um, – what's the word I'm looking for? If you're going to mask things off, um, I recommend frog tape, especially if you're going over other paint areas that are – or have been painted already because um, it peels off easier without pulling off what's underneath it. And um, – it doesn't leave a residue. It's way more expensive. That is the downside. So I spend a lot more on tape than I'd like to, but if it helps me to avoid mistakes and all that, it's worth the extra money, I think. You gotta pick and choose what's worth it and what's not worth it. So I'm gonna have to try and avoid, I'm gonna try and avoid this end cap here when I do the chartreuse, it's not so much a big deal with the white because I'm going to paint that and cap a different color anyways. So I'm just going to go along this line with my white wrong, wrong gun, sorry. Got the wrong gun. And I'm going to just, you have to put white underneath chartreuse if you want it to be bright. If you don't, it's going to be kind of muddy and not very bright. And again, this is already yellow, and so I shouldn't need to put a ton of coats on to cover it up. Just enough to make, you know, a good base where... And I'm just painting right along the line, like the tape, basically, right along the edge of the tape. Downward a little bit so I don't get too much overspray. So I don't get too much overspray on the blue part, because I'm probably just going to leave that blue. And then we're going to grab the chartreuse and go right over the white. Okay. 
So again, you want to be careful not to overdo it, but I'm just painting right along the edge of that T. And that's um, how you get a straight line. Just use tape. You don't have to use tape. You can freehand it if you don't need a clean line. And I'm not sure if this is going to look perfect or not when I pull it off, and I may end up adjusting it. But we're going to try this first. So there's an example of getting a little bit too much paint on there. If you can kind of see how it kind of piled up right here on this edge. I don't know if you can see that or not. And you might have too much light on YouTube to really be able to tell. Or, and it's not very noticeable, but that's what happens when too much paint comes out at once. You start to see a cool up. The air kind of like pushes the paint into a little peaks and stuff. And so that's why it's important to do light coat. And sometimes it's hard to see with these lighter colors like the yellows and oranges. It's hard to tell when you're overdoing it. Yeah, I've been doing this for years and I still make that mistake without intentionally making that mistake. Okay, so that's pretty good, I think, um, brightness wise. So I'm just gonna like leave the other side with the blue scaling, you know, and then I'm gonna just have the chartreuse instead of the, it was a candy yellow, like a candy transparent yellow before. So we added a little bit of a pop to it. And I'm just going to heat set this to make sure it's dry, and then I'll pull the tape off here. So I'm just pulling the tape off. You can reuse it sometimes if you want to. Um, sometimes if I cut stripes, like I'll cut stripes to mask, like a perch pattern or whatever, a chrome. And I'll just stick them to the side of a plastic container, and I'll reuse them as many times as I can until they just really don't stick anymore. Uh, but usually you can. So now we have the chartreuse stripe fading into the blue, and I still left this shiny holographic here. So now he wants me to paint the cap here in a pink color. Okay, so I'm gonna make sure that's nice and dry, and um, now I'm gonna have to somehow tape around this edge. And it's gonna be a little bit tricky, but it may take a few pieces of tape. But I'm basically just going to try and tape it off until I have the edges covered up uh, and just the cap sticking out. So you'll have to use probably like several pieces of tape and maybe bend the tape a little bit if you can to get mostly just this top side um, masked off. Because the bottom side, obviously, you know, you're not going to get overspray if you're spraying this way. You're not going to get overspray on this back side here. It's not going to happen. It shouldn't. Sometimes overspray finds its way into places you never thought possible. And if you're a painter, you know what I mean, because you're always like, damn it, how did that happen? But it does, I'm telling you. So I'm just kind of tearing this up so I can put it in sections around this, this cap area, and I'm just taking this whole thing off as best as I can. And then I'm just going to get this side here just a little bit, just in case. Okay. Like I totally just didn't do it myself any good right there. Okay, that's pretty good. This one's pretty good already. So that should be good. So that's covered up. So now let's do some white. I can get rid of this chartreuse now. I'm not going to use that again for a little bit at least. And we'll rinse this out. So this is simple, but you know, because of all the masking, it's still like some, somewhat time consuming. Um, but it should have a nice um, flash in the water once I get done with it. Okay, so white now, we're gonna just cover this top. And this did just have an irregularity in it. It's got a little bit of like a gouge it just came that way. There's not much I can do about that. So 
So just a few coats. I'm just kind of like letting it set here. Um, see if I got any questions. The random giveaway. Uh, maybe I'll bring it back sometime soon. I haven't done those in a long time. It gets really, um, I mean, I don't know, people get kind of testy about the random giveaways sometimes. It's kind of like, it's a little bit of drama sometimes. And a lot of people watch, you know, just, that's all they care about is the giveaway they don't watch because they want to actually see what you do. Um, so you get a lot of, like, different people who aren't really interested in what you're doing. They're just... And I know you guys aren't like that, but um, I'm just telling you there's drama. People are drama sometimes. I'll do one next week. How about that? I'll do a giveaway next week. I didn't have anything prepared for this weekend, or I would have. So, and then, you know what, that comment picker that I used, that was not working half the time for a while. It, like, decided that it didn't like you know what? Hang on a second. Before I do this, I'm going to do the midline first. So I don't want to. I don't want to. I'm just taping this off while that dries real quick. Just going to tape this off really quick and then back to it. I'll just wrap that around like that. And we'll do another one in a minute. This one is like a more of a silver, it's just like a silver shag color. So um, he wants like a midline on there. Um, probably chartreuse. But I might do green instead just to be difficult. So we're going to do pink now. So this is just uh, Createx fluorescent pink. I usually use the auto air colors, but I don't have, uh, I don't use pink a lot, so I don't have that one. Like I've had this, this one forever. So I don't use a lot. So this is a little bit of 40, um, 13 producer maybe. I don't remember. They all, they all work fine, the 40, 11, 12, 13. They have purposes, like different purposes, but the, the 40, 11 is supposed to be uh, for like hot temperatures, like if you're outside doing t-shirts or something, you know, in the heat. I think it's supposed to help your paint not set up too fast or something like that. I don't know. But for our purposes, it doesn't really matter. Unless you're painting in like, a super hot garage or something, which mine is really freaking hot sometimes. But I've never had a problem with any of the other reducers, so I don't know. Maybe I would if I was painting t-shirts like one after the other. Maybe then I would have problems with the heat, but I don't know. Um, hey Rob, I may, I'm painting some Brad Superbait Hot plugs, and they have. I'll show you real quick. They they have um, this little scent pad that goes inside here. They're for salmon, so you get put a little scent pad or some like live bait inside there. And it's got vent holes, and it's supposed to attract you know bites with the smell. And apparently, they work really good for salmon. And a good friend gave them to me to paint because he had a bunch of them, but he wanted some different colors, you know, some brighter stuff. So we're, we're doing that. They're pretty cool. They're um, not something that I ever heard of until the, until he sent these to me, so kind of cool. Share the feed if you can, guys. I appreciate the shares. The comment picker is broken. Yeah, you know, there's always people always think it's rigged too, and I'm like, I don't think it ever. 
Like if it picked Chris, then obviously I would like run it again, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's about it. No, they're not spoons. Um, you probably heard what I just said, Arthur. Yeah, I I haven't seen them before either. They they're actually from Warren. If you guys know Warren, I know some of you guys know Warren. But um, he sent them to me. So we're doing some fluorescence because he loves fluorescence. And apparently so do salmon. So that's what we're doing. I've really not salmon fished. So now we have fluorescent pink on one end, a sharp line in the middle, and we have a half shard back. Now, he wants an orange tail too. So I'm just going to mask off everything but the tail. We're going to make that orange. And we'll probably do like one more color. Do all kids like refuse to wear shoes outside or is it just mine? It's like a constant argument about wearing shoes. You know, and I have my garage, and so, so there's a legitimate reason for me to want them to wear shoes. But no. It's a constant battle. All right, so I'm just doing white again here. I'm covering everything up. If you didn't hear me say it before, with fluorescence, it's important that you have a really bright white base before you paint them. Otherwise, you'll have a really hard time getting them bright. So I, I don't like doing transparent lures with fluorescent colors because it's really hard to get a bright color, especially if they don't have like a holographic film under them. Because um, once, the, once the light goes all the way through them and stuff, and you, it just kind of ruins it. The holographic film helps that helps them pop a little bit, but it's not, not going to be like it is over white. So I'm just cleaning the pink out here, and I'm going to put orange in. This thing is leaking still. I, you know, I need a new spray bottle. That's been like a year that the pink's been leaking. I keep forgetting. I know they're like a dollar, <laughs> so it's kind of stupid. But. Okay, pink away. Now we're going to put some orange in. This is Auto Air by Createx Fluorescent Hot Orange. Can't be rigged, you actually won. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, the lure? Yeah, this is, um, it's called a... Super big, a brand super big cut plug, and it is. Um, so I had one of the packages down a minute ago. So you run. There's a leader that runs through, and there's two hooks. Sorry. And then there's this foam pad that you can soak in, like a scent, or you can put like just regular put fish in there or whatever. And this big rubber band here, that clamps around the end here to keep it shut. Okay, and then I took the leader out with the hooks already to paint it. Um, and so you can just stink it up. It opens right up, and then it closes back down. So they're pretty cool. I had never seen them either, so. All right. A little hot orange action here. This is kind of thin. I'm going to try not reducing it and see how it goes. Yeah, it's spraying okay. Different bottles of the same paint are sometimes totally different thicknesses. Has anybody ever noticed that? Like you'll get one bottle of Wicked and it's like paste, and then you get another one and it's like you almost don't need to reduce it even. And then there's the, the pearl blue that won't spray, right, no matter what you do. I love that color, but it sprays terrible. The pearl blue. 
Thank you, Emerson. Hey, Shane. Um, hey, Dad, how's it going? Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. You guys all packed up? Ready for this big trip? The boy is whining. My son in the background, which is pretty much a constant around here. Okay, so we're almost done here. He's out here on his hoverboard on his knees. Okay. So let's take off the paint, and this one's all done. So this is all done. I'll send it back to him, probably disassembled. But I have to put a clear coat on it. Um, I haven't figured out how I'm going to clear coat this yet. I'm probably going to have to either spray it with automotive clear or I'm probably going to have to spray it with automotive clear. Um, for my automotive clear, I, I dig it out, but it's it's buried way back there. It's Tamco High Impact uh, Automotive Clear. I personally, like, I think Alumi UV, the UV resin that I use is better. Um, I don't know. It's just my opinion. I think it's more durable and um, harder. But I know a lot of people like Tamco. I use it on, like, spoons and blades, and it's still good. I just don't think it's as good as Lumi UV. So I prefer to use UV as, if possible, but I don't think I could do it on this with all the holes and stuff. It would be really hard to get all these holes cleared. So I'm probably going to have to spray them, and that's fine. And it's very toxic stuff, too. So if you ever, you know, wanted to go with automotive you need to make sure that you have a really good ventilation system. I have a really good fan uh, with a six inch pipe going out the wall and um, that's really necessary. And then you also um, need to have a full respirator with both vapor and particulate filters. This is what I wear when I'm painting, when I'm not on video. And I wear it all the time. And if you get used to it, it's really not that bad. So wear it. Okay. The vapor filters are expensive. They last about 40 hours of work. And then uh, the particulate filters, you just change when they start, you start to feel like they're sucking in and out while you're breathing. You can hear them kind of sucking in and out. And that means they're clogged. So they just keep the main particles out of the vapor filters so that you're not ruining your vapor filters really fast because they're way more expensive than the particulate filters. That's my PSA, everybody. Stay healthy. Okay, let's finish. Let's do this one over here now. Let's do a green midline. How about that? So let me put some white in here. Or should we do orange since we have orange already in the gun? What say you? Green or orange? Painting blades on spinner baits? Um, I've thought about it, but I haven't done it. I don't know. It sounds like a lot of work for a little, a little tiny thing. Uh, spoons, yes. Um, I have a bunch of spoons, John, that I haven't gotten to yet. If you have any ideas, feel free to PM me because I haven't. I should probably do some in trout and some bright ones. I just haven't gotten to them yet. I mean, we have a ton of trout here in Colorado, so it's kind of stupid not to. Maybe I should make that a priority. I ordered some from, um, I think, Jan's Netcraft or something. So I have a few different types. And I've painted spoons before, so I know how to do it. It's just getting it done. I've painted ice spoons, I should say. I haven't painted, like, big ones. It's all the same. So I'm just putting a white, a white base down on this, uh, and then I'll put my 
I'll put my midline down. Orange. Aaron says orange. Yeah, please send me some pictures, John. That would be super awesome. Was made blades? Oh, God. Somebody asked me. Oh, and I totally, like, forgot to get back to them. Oh, they were supposed to get back to me with some more pictures. Um, yeah, that sounds like a lot of work for not a lot of return is the problem because, you know, how much more can you charge for a painted buzz? I mean, the buzz bait itself is still going to cost the same, right? And then I'm going to all the work of painting the blade. It's just a lot of work. I don't know how many people would really pay a lot extra for that. Because most of this is just my time, you know. I don't want to work for free. There's plenty of co material costs to trust me, but um, the majority of what I make goes right back into materials. But I have to make stuff. Make some so let's do uh, blue green. How about blue green on the end? And then on the back, I might do a candy, like a candy um, color on the back. I like candy purple or something like that. Those look pretty good. Okay, so you just pull the tape off here. There's nothing underneath this tape except for just the original color. So now you have an orange to black midline instead of just plain. So just add a little bit of little pop to it. So I'm going to tape off the, the flat end here again with my tape and we'll paint this end blue. Fluorescent blue to be more specific, I guess. Uh, everybody on YouTube's pretty quiet tonight. Yeah, I know it's getting around that time of year when a lot of people are going to be fishing tournaments on Saturdays. And um, usually in the summertime, I go to weekdays once my kids are at school. I do it on weekdays instead, my show. But I haven't really decided what I'm going to do yet. Everybody has a different weekday they prefer, so. It's never gonna be perfect, I guess. Maybe I should do like, not always the same day, you know? That would be a decent idea, I guess. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and tape the tail because we're gonna do the tail in green. So I'll tape that real quick too, since I've got an extra piece of tape here. And, uh, and then I can just do all my white at once. Okay, so this is white here. I need a little more. Yeah, I know it is. It, some of them are more time consuming than others, and it's not always like how much detail there is isn't necessarily always a good indicator of how much time goes into it either. It just depends. That's why I always offer discounts on my in-stock items and not so much on custom because when I'm doing a hundred of one color, I can justify giving a discount. But when I'm doing like, when I'm stopping to do like a whole new color for somebody, you know, or I'm switching my routine to do like a, uh, another design for somebody that I hadn't planned on doing or wasn't, you know, I'm not going to do a hundred of. It takes more more time to stop and start. So that part of that policy is more about my time than anything. Okay, so um, here's the white on the tail. Let me do the end cap here real quick. I wonder if this is a hole. I think this is actually an intention.
potential hole in the end of this um, that maybe some water flows through. It looks like it might go through all the way through. I thought it was an imperfection, but now I'm realizing I think they all have that hole, so it must have some function. Might help it move through the like water a little bit smoother or something like that. I'm guessing. Okay. Hey guys. Yes, Parrot Head and guys on YouTube. Um, our internet <laughs> has been a problem for the past few, couple months. Um, and we're supposed to be getting moved to a new, we're on satellite internet, we're supposed to get moved to a new tower, but they had a delay in, I guess, activating or whatever the tower, and so we're still waiting. But once that happens, it should be way better, like, better than it's been ever. So, we wait. Hopefully sometime in the next couple weeks, but I don't know for sure. So yeah, if, if the feed is choppy, unfortunately, I can't really just flip over to you, uh, Facebook if you have Facebook and watch there. If you don't, then my apology. I can't really do anything about it right now. And my kids aren't even really streaming right now, so it's just not good. Because they're outside, it's really nice out tonight. Okay, so let's do some blue on the end of this one. These patterns are really simple tonight. Nothing earth shattering. So if you were looking for something super exciting, it's the bait that's exciting, not my paint. Okay. Now blue is really transparent, so you have to do a lot of coats, just like um, pressure. And a lot of um, heat sets in between. There's Warren. I'm ruining all your baits, Warren. Hey, Mark. Oh, you're fine, Aunt. You can make them complicated. I don't mind. I like doing, you know, custom orders. It challenges me. But I don't offer discounts for that reason. It's the time at all. Sometimes I, I develop like colors for my store based on like something I paint for a custom order that I really like. And so I decided to do more of them. And um, if you didn't want me to, I, if you didn't want me to replicate your color to sell to other people, that's fine. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. But if you don't tell me not to, I probably Oops. My hose just blew off. Hang on. It happens once in a while. And I rolled over my hose now, too. Okay. Better. Every once in a while, these quick disconnects blow off. Okay. That's probably good. I think I might have got a little overspray on that. So I can probably just remove the overspray here with, like, a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel. As long as the um, the bait's already been clear coated, there's nothing, there's no paint there. Um, you can usually just wipe it with. See, like I have a little. Oh, see, it took the paint off. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. So here's you get to see a repair now, and we'll see if I can pull it off. So generally, frog tape won't take paint off underneath it, but if it hasn't dried for like a day. It could still happen. So it's less likely to happen with frog tape, but it's not impossible. So I'm just going to go ahead and clean up my overspray and then I will fix this. So I, this is just a little bit of alcohol on a paper towel. 
and I'm just wiping. Probably not the cleanest paper towel, but I think I got it. So I just wiped out the overspray there. So um, it looks fine. So let's fix this now. I was done with orange. So I'll put my tape back on. I'm not going to um, tape the end off. I'm just going to cover it with my hand so that I don't. So I'll just put my thumb on there like that. See what I did there? I'll just stick my thumb on here so it, it gets covered. And I'll go back to my white. And again, same thing I did before. So I just covered that white, and now I'm going to have to do switch back to orange. So I'll clean this out real quick and put orange back in. I feel like when you're a new painter, you really panic about little mistakes like that are easily fixable. And you're like, oh, I'm not going to fix that. That That's going to take forever. It's just going to be terrible. And um, Over time, you learn that it's not as time consuming as you make, make it out to be in your mind. And the fixes become, you know, pretty fast and you're like, you don't panic about those mistakes anymore as much as you did at the beginning. At least that's my experience from how I was. So just a few drops of orange is plenty. And then I'm just going to pick this back up and cover it up. And I'm just spraying over the white that I just did with my orange. And again, I'll have to heat set in between coats so I don't overdo it. So I'm just, you can kind of see where that was. It's not covered up yet, but I'm working on it. Okay, and there's one I want. Oh yeah, that Takeda thing you gave me. Oh God. No, I don't want to do that. I'm just not one of those people that wants to paint the super weird stuff, you know? I have a couple, like, painter friends who like doing that kind of stuff, and they're really good at it, but I'm just not that person. Okay, that should be pretty good. Fixed. It's all fixed. Still a little wet, but fixed. So let's do the tail now in green. So I'll switch to green. And right here is, again, Auto Air um, Fluorescent Hot Green. They just call it, I don't know why they call it hot green. It's just fluorescent green. A little bit of reducer. Quick stir. This is a disposable paintbrush. That's what I stir with my paint with. And then I'll just do the tail here with this. Try not to get any overspray on this. I can avoid it. Good, Brian. How's it going? Walt, hello. Um, I paint just about anything. Swim baits, crank baits, jerk baits, trout lures, salmon lures. Soft plastic swim base. Um, I haven't done a lot of big game base, but I can. Like I haven't done a ton of musky lures, but I definitely can do that. 
This is a salmon bait. Um, and I showed, I've already uh, showed how it works a couple times, but I'll tell you one more time in a minute. It's a very interesting concept and apparently works quite well from what I've been told. I'm just drying this. If you can't see what I'm doing, I'm just drying it in the background here. And I ran out of green, and this is not as green as I want it to be, so I'm going to add a little bit more. So I have a bunch of these to do. And some really big ones, too. He gave me some big ones. So that should be fun. Well, Walt, it is a very... It's fun. I mean, it's expensive to get into. Sounds cheap, but not. I always warn people when they start that you're going to spend about 300 times more money than you think you're going to spend. Unless you just want to, like, do really basic stuff. Never stays basic. You always end up wanting more stencils, more paint, more... Oh, my God. It never ends. But there's a lot to learn. That is for sure. And a lot of... Um, can be it can be a lot of fun too. Okay, so now we have blue, blue nose, orange midline, and green tail. You probably can't see the green very well on YouTube. I know that um, the color is kind of washed out on there a little bit, and I can't figure out why. So. All right, so here's the two that I did tonight. I'll show um, in case Warren's watching wants to see how they look so far. So we did a chartreuse. Um, yeah, we just did a bunch of different, a couple different color combos. And then this one has um, chartreuse on the back, and I left that one chrome. So there's the two that I did tonight. So hope you guys enjoyed it. If you didn't see how these work, they open on up and there's a, a little um, piece of foam that you can stick in the space soaked in some kind of a scent. Or you can put like fish in there or whatever you want and then close it on up with a little rubber band they give you. And that's your, your bait. Pretty cool stuff. So thank you guys so much. Great, Warren. I'm glad you like it. Thanks, you guys, for watching. I appreciate it. Again, 15% off with the code LIVE in all caps until Sunday night, anything that's in stock. And also, um, just follow me on all my socials. If you uh, can, I included the link at the bottom here um, where you can find all my social media links. And um, you guys have a wonderful night. Thank you so much. And we'll see you next week.